So far, so good. I don't hear any static. I hope that remains the case. Um, so far, so good. I think we're good. It's a happy morning. <laughs> good morning and welcome to Daylight with Dean number 154 on September 15th, 2020. It is a good morning for a couple reasons. Uh, first of all, there's no static, which is uh, very pleasant to hear. <laughs> and uh, secondly, because it's Tuesday morning after a Monday night football game, after the first Monday night football of the season, and after the Steelers won, and after Big Ben returned after not playing for 365 days, and I have breath in my lungs. It is a good morning today. So in celebration of the gift of life and the gift of a Steelers victory, <laughs> let's enjoy our coffee together. Mm. That that tastes so much better after Steelers win. Mm. It's a happy day in the Ward household. Um, I am so glad to be with you this morning. I will say if I'm usually uh, a little short on sleep, uh, the Tuesday morning after a Monday night football game uh, would be especially so, especially with the season opener because they played two Monday night games. The Steelers were on at 7:10, and then the next Monday night game, the last first game of the season, started at 10, like 15, 10:30, something like that. And I stayed up and watched a good portion of that as well, and then woke up at 3:30 in the morning in my recliner with ESPN still on the television. <laughs> and then I went back to bed for two more hours. So, um, if you don't know, you're, you're uh, entering football season, and uh, you're entering into my world of being a lifelong Steeler fan. So, uh, if you despise the Steelers, I pray that you get saved. Um, no, just kidding. Kind of. Uh, if you despise the Steelers, um, I, I hate to tell you, that there are going to be several references to them over the next, um, let's see, this is September, October, November, December, January, Feb next five months. So I hope that you're okay with that. And if not, I'll see you in the middle of February. You can join back in because we're going to be enjoying the Steelers a lot. Um, we... We rejoice with the Steelers, with Steeler Nation, and we cry with Steeler Nation. And this morning, it is a celebration. Um, I've been a fan my entire life, as long as I can remember. Um, I, being a blonde-headed, blue-eyed little guy, uh, of course, Terry Bradshaw was my hero was my hero indeed. Uh, used to wear my hair straight down, and when I was about nine or ten years old, I got it cut and kind of combed to the side, and I wanted it to look like Terry Bradshaw. Little did I know that the older I get, the more my hair would look like Terry Bradshaw's. Um, he's bald as well, except he wears the big bushy blonde hair the whole way around, and I chose to go with the Telly Savalas look. 
There are a lot of 70s references here showing my age. If you don't know who Telly Savalas is, uh, look up Kojak. Um, fascinating uh, show back in the 70s. So, um, the Steelers, by the way, are under Mike Tomlin, have a remarkable Monday Night Football record. They're like 14 wins and two losses under him. Um, maybe 16 and two. I can't remember. They gave the stat last night. And Bill Cower had a equally remarkable Monday Night Football winning percentage, I believe, almost. And they showed last night that the Steelers just tied the San Francisco 49ers for the most Monday Night Football wins in Monday Night Football history. So that would be 49 wins. When I was in, when I was 11 years old in sixth grade, we, for our open house, uh, had a about me kind of page. Uh, when our parents came to our classroom that evening, it didn't have our name on it. They had to read it and then guess which one was us, ours. And I distinctly remember writing on there that my favorite TV show at 11 years old in 1977 was Monday Night Football. And I remember it started at 9 and my parents would let me stay up till 10.30 till halftime and watch it. Oh, it was a happy day. So I have not transferred this passionate love for the Steelers to my daughters. Transferred it, transferred it to my son with one little caveat. He's a Ray Lewis fan. So yesterday on Sunday, on Sunday, two days ago, he was wearing his Ray Lewis jersey in support of the Baltimore Ravens. But uh, I despise the Ravens, by the way. Um, but, uh, I'm sorry, in Jesus' name, of course. Um, but my daughters just have such little interest in football, let alone Steeler football, that it, it baffles me, but it's okay. It's okay. So imagine my surprise last evening at the beginning of the game when my daughter came and said, uh, Mom and Dad, I'm, I'm going to watch the Steeler game with my boyfriend. And I'm like, what? <laughs> Words that I never thought I heard would hear. And I'm like, there's still hope. There's still hope for her. And so after the game, I was in the kitchen. She came home. And I'm like, well, tell me, how was it? I said, what was it like watching a Monday Night Football game with, with your boyfriend? Tell me what it was like. And she kind of like, and then she said, and I have permission to share this. I talked over with her last night what I was going to share, and she said it was okay. She said, you know, guys get so emotional about football. I mean, they get so worked up about it and so emotional about it, and it doesn't even really matter. And and I, I just, I'm like, I don't get it. I don't get how they can be so emotional about football and yet so unemotional about their relationships. <laughs> how, how they can be so uh, disconnected emotion. I don't remember the language that she used. I don't remember exactly what she said, but the point was we care so much about football. We care so much about the Steelers. We show so much emotion about the Steelers that she can't understand how come that doesn't get carried over with the same kind of passion and care and commitment to relationships, especially uh, girlfriend relationships. <laughs> and she's like, they act like it's the most important thing in the world. and Something along those lines. Now, again, I'm quoting in concepts right now. Uh, that's that's kind of the concept of our conversation. And so I went, hmm. I have, I have a thought I'm going to share in a second. And 
And so I looked at my daughter and I said, well, I, I have to tell you, um, and just being honest here, except for uh, the tragedies that we've experienced in, in life, except for my father dying in a car accident on his 64th birthday, I said, except for um, my mother dying um, in an accident uh, on a trip with you <laughs> in Hawaii, uh, except for the tragedy that you experienced being with my mother during this, <laughs> I, I said, apart from those three things, I looked at and I said, the most emotionally disparaging, distressing, gut-wrenching thing I have ever experienced in my life was the Pirates losing in the 1992 playoff game when Barry Bonds failed to throw out Sid Bream at home and keep the game tied against the Atlanta Braves when Stan Belinda was pitching and that was the end of Doug Drabeck, Barry Bonds, and the last chance the Pirates will ever have of winning the World Series, getting to the World Series under this current ownership. That wasn't under that current ownership, but under the current ownership now. I said, apart from those three things that I just mentioned as I looked at her, that is the most emotionally distressing thing that's ever ex happened in my life. And she looked at me like I was utterly ridiculous. And I know that's coming off of, you know, the 19th anniversary of the World Trade Centers. I know that's coming off of, you know, this COVID virus, coronavirus thing that we've been navigating for the past six months plus. I know, I know. But I said, just to be honest, uh, the grief in my soul, and if you're from Pittsburgh, if you followed Pittsburgh sports, maybe you'll appreciate what I'm saying. Maybe you won't. But there was a collective grief in the city for that entire next week that has really never ended when it came to baseball. I mean, Johnny Cueto dropping the ball against the Cincinnati Reds when the Pirates played them in October of 13 in that single elimination game to make the playoffs against the St. Louis Cardinals in the fall of 2013. That, that, uh, that helped with that grief, but it did not erase it. And... When I put that in perspective, I'm like, am I just, uh, am, I, am I just ridiculous? And I, I've given quite a bit of thought to it uh, after we spoke and this morning, and I, I looked at my daughter and I told her I was going to share this on daylight with her permission. She gave me permission, and I... I'm open to consideration that maybe that's uh, idolatry of some sort. Uh, maybe it's uh, loving something more than I should love it. Uh, your sports team, that it's the fourth heaviest tragedy that you've ever experienced when my life has had three <laughs> significant tragedies in it, which means if those three tragedies didn't happen, the biggest tragedy in my life would be what I shared um, about the pirates. I don't, I don't know. You know, my pastor friend, Steve Childs, um, he, he's never, let me think, he, he's a sports fan. He's a basketball fan fan. He loves basketball. And he lives in Oklahoma City. And I don't think he's lived in a city that has um, had a pro sports team that has um, 
maybe I'm wrong, but I don't, I don't think he's been in a city that's had a championship while he's lived there of a professional sports team. I just, I don't think he has. I'm not sure. But in Oklahoma City, it's a small, big city. And uh, several years ago, when the Thunder uh, were just tearing it up and going to the playoffs and going deep in the playoffs just uh, three, four years ago, uh, he, we talked and I could hear his exuberance. And I, I looked at him and I said, it's remarkable how a sports franchise that a city takes deep pride in when that sports franchise wins, it's remarkable what it does to the morale of the city. I said, it really makes a significant difference, doesn't it? He's like, Dean, you're absolutely right. I'm living in it now. And we, we live and die with our basketball team. And right now we're living and living to the fullest and it's thrilling. And I'm like, I'm from Pittsburgh. I, I know the, uh, I know the energy and I did misspeak. Uh, Steve Childs did live here in 91 and 92 when the Penguins won both of their, uh, two Stanley cup, first two Stanley cups. And I don't think Steve was ever into hockey, so I don't know that that was on his radar as strongly as uh, basketball, baseball, or football would have been. But um, uh, so, it's who I am. Um, you don't have to love the Steelers to 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 to. Uh, uh, love me, <laughs> but uh, I preach in my Steeler jerseys on the Sundays they play. That's why I didn't wear my Steeler jersey this past Sunday because they were playing on Monday. I preach in my Steeler jersey on the Sundays they play. Um, I refer to the Steelers throughout my uh, sermons, throughout my day, throughout my life, now throughout daylight. So if that's going to be uh, an adjustment with you that uh, you're not sure you can make, I invite you to hang with me for a bit and see. But um, they, uh, they matter to me. And um, I thought my daughter's observation was um, thought-provoking. And... Um, I've, I'm giving it quite a bit of thought. So I, I just would like to ask you um, to do a little inventory today to see if there's something that you're passionately emotional about or committed to or something that breaks your heart or brings you more joy than can be expressed that might be out of order in your life. <laughs> and um, if you live and die with your sports teams, uh, I'd, love to, I'd love to hear uh, from you on that and invite you to do a little bit of inventory. Now, fortunately for me, I hit the lottery uh, with Leslie. Uh, we were married a couple years and in the middle of summer, late summer, she said, Dean, do you know what, do you, do you know what's just really on my mind right now? She said, are you ready for some football? She goes, I can't wait for football to start. And she said that she was a Steeler fan when we were dating, but I wasn't quite sure. Well, pff, she is and we watch the games together, and she paces. Uh, she paces a lot during the games, but we watch the game together. We have that in common in our life, and it does bring great joy. So um, maybe you're unequally yoked with uh, someone who's 
passionate about sports and you're not, or you're passionate about sports and they're not. Uh, maybe you're unequally yoked in that you're a Steeler fan and your spouse is a Cleveland Browns fan. I heard of a couple that watches Daylight who uh, that is the case. Um, I will I will pray for you and peace in your marriage. Uh, a little tongue in cheek there, but uh, if you can't tell, I'm glad <laughs> football season is back and of all the sports has not been interrupted over the last six months as far as the game and regular season schedule. So uh, yes, indeed, last night was a happy night at the Ward household and today uh, we'll be enjoying that all day long. So I'd like to uh, wrap up our time with prayer. Uh, you're more than welcome to pray for me, that the Lord helps me align my priorities in a way that you might think they should be, and I will appreciate those prayers, um, and I will pray for you as well. So let's start this day out together in prayer. God, we're so thankful for your goodness, for your faithfulness, and for your love to us this morning. Lord, I thank you for each person here and their willingness to listen to my uh, Pittsburgh rant about my affinity for our football team. Thank you, Lord, for that, uh, for these folks that as friends are on this journey with me. And now, Lord, I pray that you would bless them today. I pray that you would give them an awareness of your love and goodness throughout the day. I pray, Lord, that you would help them have more grace and more understanding uh, for the people they work with, the people they live with, the people they live near. I pray that you would bless them in every way. It's with great anticipation that we look forward to all that's ahead today. Thank you for the blessing of yesterday, and we surrender today to you now. Jesus, thank you. We ask all this, we pray all this with a heart of gratitude and in your name, in the precious, amazing, strong, fantastic name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen, guys. Great to be with you today and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning. God bless. Bye.